Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to answer a question that has been asked quite some times by a lot of you guys. Uh, so thank you for asking it. I've never really come to talk about it because, I don't know, so many other people really talk about it a lot online that I, I just, I don't know. Uh, but okay, so here we go. You're going to get my honest and truthful opinion on the subject <laughs> while we're at the subject it's a funny subject futile luxury my dears here we go and it's about the difference between Birkins and Chanel's now um, Zana my dear a very great question thank you so much for writing in the comment section and you were so sweet to say Please do a Q&A because you don't want me to write it because it takes a lot of time. It does take a lot of time, but guess what? Every time I have time, I love writing with you guys. I love commenting, answering the comments, answering your questions because that's, that's what I love to do. And to me, it's not a burden at all. It's actually a lot of fun. And every time I have time, I love to spend it with you guys. So let the questions pour. And as soon as I'm on the computer, I'll answer them. Uh, but this one... True, it uh, does require kind of um, a video. So let's get to it, shall we? So, um, okay, uh, the question, 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 question. I would like to hear your opinion on the Birkin bag. What is your holy grail bag? Is it the Chanel Classic? For me, it's of course the Chanel, but I feel like most people would say the Birkin is the queen of all bags. Is it? Stay tuned to find out in next week's episode. <laughs> oh, guys, sorry. I'm just working the whole day. I'm totally busted. My brain is like <laughs> somewhere else. Anyway, um, I have my little antenna on today because I'm going to, I'm channeling. I'm channeling like, you know, fashion vibes all over the world. Uh, all right. So for me, it's of course the Chanel. The Burgers are. And what do you think about the price? Do you think it's worth it? Find out next week, in, over next week's episode. Oh my god, I'm boring myself to sleep. All right, well, before we begin. Um, I'm not going to get into specifics about these two bags. Meaning, you, there's a myriad of videos out there about the sizes, shapes, materials, forms, price ranges of the Birkins. Of the Birkin bags. Uh, shapes, prices, uh colors, whatever, of the Chanel bag, except, well, the classic is the classic. There is black, there's caviar, there's lambskin, and then there's the beige. Um, lambskin. Birkin offers a bit more variations as far as, I mean, the classic, you get an alligator, crocodile, reptiles, all that sort of stuff, but the classic classic is either caviar or lambskin, as far as Chanel goes. I personally, you know... What movie did Kate Blanchett star in not such a long time ago? I think, did she, didn't she? Yeah, she won an Oscar for it, didn't she? Oh, God, I can't remember anymore. I should have done my homework after work, but I was so excited to just get this done with the video to shoot it so that I didn't really... But, I, you know, Kate Blanchett, it was Kate Blanchett, right? Had a Birkin on the entire movie. I don't know what it was. That's the type of scenario I envision a Birkin bag in. You see, that that's exactly the type of scenario. And that's a type of woman, maybe. Now, don't get me wrong. I know there are Birkin fans out there. I know there are Chanel fans out there. I know that some Birkin lovers or MS lovers don't like the Chanel. Vice versa is more rare, though. And that's, a, that's an interesting thing. You can always have MS people snobbing the Chanel wearers. Never the other way around. Interesting. It's as if Hermes in, in this leather part of it, because not the apparel much so. It's more for the leather goods. Chanel beats Hermes in the apparel. Hermes, as far as pricing goes, beats Chanel in leather goods. But um, it's as if Hermes would be the like an aristocratic version of fashion, and Chanel would be a bourgeois version of fashion if you want, but in an arrogant way, not in a positive way. Now, that's something that makes me a little bit hesitant to like Birkins or Kellys because of the people that wear them more than the actual brand itself. I don't know what it is. It's 
And by the people that wear them, I don't mean us people, regular people. I mean the type of stars or famous people or royalty that wears them. It comes across off to me. There's always something a bit off about it. Um, the shape is simple. I mean, it, it's, it's a beautifully executed, simple shape bag, but it, it's what it represents. And the vision, the contorted vision we have of it through the, that, that's been given to us through the media and through design history, if you want, that kind of contorts our, the same contorted vision we have of beauty. Why do the poor girls out there have to suffer to become effing anorexic to meet some sick, crazy standard of some sick editor of some sick magazine that kind of decided for the rest of the world that heroin chic is the new thing? That's sick. But we've been bombarded and bombed by this notion over and over again until we're brainwashed and we believe that the Barbie figure is natural and beautiful and it's something to aspire to. I, I really don't get that. I mean, yeah, I get why it's like that, but I, I'm so sad that to see girls, and I work in fashion, I see girls a lot that, that really suffer, and I always tell them, I know, like, you want jobs, and, it, and you, you're going to have to lose that, but it's horrible. Don't let anybody bend your vision of reality and health. That's a very serious topic, of course, but getting back to the futile topic of bags, it's similar in a way, the contorted vision we have of what a certain bag can go with or can be paired with rather than not paired with. So oftentimes you will hear people say or tell you online or offline, oh, the Birkin is hard to pull off because, you know, at a formal event you're going, or at just any sort of event, walking on down the street, people are going to be like, why are you wearing this here? It, it's too much. You're going to also hear a lot of, again, the Birkin and the MS, the snobby lovers, tell you, eh, Chanel is actually cheap. People, let's get this over with. Wear what you love to wear and laugh at the people that look at you and judge you. Laugh back because you don't need their criticism because it's not constructive. Somebody's trying to diminish who you are. Somebody's trying to make you feel like shit because of their judgment, of their limited and subjective judgment. Don't let that ever happen to you. I was just talking to a friend of mine uh, um, some time ago, a couple of hours ago. You know, it takes, you get those 50 amazing comments on YouTube, beautiful, positive, gives you such great energy. And then you get that one crappy one that ruins your entire day. And I was like, why is this? You know, and this friend of mine was like, hey, Deco, but you know what? The thing is this, you have to force yourself to see it logically. And logically, that person that gave you that bad, unconstructive criticism doesn't know who you are. It means nothing to you. That person is, is not helping you in any way. You don't take it at heart. Take it heart, cr criticism from people that love you, that mean something to you, that care for you. Because that's, because first of all, those type of people are going to give you criticism when it's constructive because they love you. So they're going to give you criticism to make your life better, to better you, to make you grow, to grow together. That's the type of criticism you should care for. You should never care for some nasty person telling you something out of their mood. They maybe just woke up on the wrong side of the bed that day and just wanted to piss somebody off and just said something really nasty. And yet, even though logically it makes perfect sense when he said that to me, to not care about that one bad criticism, logically it makes sense, but in the moment when it happens, you're psychologically just not ready sometimes and it hits you. Then you gotta heal from that. <laughs> Now, could you imagine being hit by the media and by a notion of a certain thing, of a certain bag being a certain way rather than another bag being another way over and over and over and over again? You get brainwashed by it and then you end up just believing and thinking that something is better than something else. Well, guess what? It's not. And here we go back to Coco Chanel, who for me is the winner. It's all about proportions, people. I, that's the only religion to follow, really, as far as non-deities or deities go. The, the fashion religion, if you want. 
proportions. If your body type, shape, color, height, weight, the way you dress your clothes, if that proportion fits with the cut, the trim, and the shape, and the color of the Birkin, that's the bag for you. If the proportions fit to the Chanel Classic, then that's the bag for you. If your proportions fit to the H&M bag that came out yesterday and is going to be gone in a week, then that's the bag for you. If you want to step it up a notch, guess what the ideal bag is to me? You need a lot of money for it, but the ideal bag is to go to some professional leather bag maker and make a custom product made just for you specifically to your body shape and necessities. That's a dream come true, to have your bag, the bag made just for you, that nobody else in the world has, that is made specifically to your proportions. That's the winner. That's like the, the epitome, that's the, the maximum to me. So it's not a Birkin or a Chanel, that would be the maximum. But alas, that will cost a lot of money, as would cost a shitload of money to get a perfume produced just for you. I'm not talking about like cheap perfumers, there are people out there that could do perfumes. I'm losing light here. The sun is going down. I'm going to artificially pump it up. Now I'm going to look all yellow. Sorry about this, but the sun is going down. Um, so as far as, you know, so perfumes goes, you could, you could, you know, get, get along to make a perfume just for you for, I don't know, 30,000 30, euro or whatever it's going to cost you. It's, it's like an insane amount of money. You could do the same with a bag. But of course, we don't have that kind of money. And of course, we struggle a lot, some of us at least struggle a lot, to get, you know, the, the passion out there, the, the bags we love, to get to wear them. I personally go for the Chanel. And this is my personal winner for now, because I don't have my custom-made amazing leather bag. Uh, and I keep the baby protected. And why, and mind you, I already made a video on this bag. It's the small classic double flap. Uh, this is my bag. <laughs> this is my personal winner. Uh, the smallest shape. I know it's com it's pricey compared to the jumbos because for the jumbo you get more material for your money. But this is just again proportion wise. My personal winner, the Birkin. I could not wear it. Maybe when I get older. For now, it just doesn't suit me. And um, oh my god, guys, sorry. I have hay fever. It's a mess, and I forgot to take my pill today. My uh, anti allergy. And again. To me, you know, playing around with this baby and just wearing it like this is so much more young and fresh than, um, than I don't know, than holding a Birkin here. <laughs> sure, you could do it. I could do it too. But it's just, to me, this is a younger bag than a Birkin. A Birkin appeals to, to a more mature audience. Um, so I'm not going to show this anymore because otherwise I'm brainwashing you with this bag rather than with a Birkin because I don't have it next to me to compare. So let's be fair as much as possible. We can never really be completely fair and honest because it's always subjective. As I said at the beginning of the video, it's subjectivity that makes us choose. But, um, everything is legitimate as long as it doesn't hurt other people. So... Enjoy. Enjoy life. You know, guys, listen, let's put it this way. It, it, this sounds so tacky and cheesy. How long are we going to be on this earth? Somebody's lucky gets to, to live to be 100. Somebody's unlucky and, and, and departs very, very soon. Some people, you know, what is our average? 60 years? I don't know. 60, 70, 8, whatever. At a certain point, we're gone. So why spend our days and time suffering and suffering about being envious or, or greedy or jealous or whatever about what other people have, what we don't have? The neighbor's grass is always greener. Suffering about everything. We just should stop and live in the moment and enjoy. I was just talking to another friend of mine, another one of our brainstormings. Um, I, I, did, I did a video the other day about, uh, you know, talking about topics that interest me, opinions. And a lot of you guys said, oh, Daco, we love it when you open up more and we get to know more about you. Well, here you go. I'm implementing more of my private life. So another friend of mine, we were talking about the universe in general and we, we're not really sure if there's aliens or other realities existing somewhere else out there. But no matter if it's true or not that there are aliens or not, I believe there are, but whatever. Can you imagine 
what were the chances that we get to be born in this infinite universe on this planet and to have the life that we have, just to live, have the chance to see a sunset, a sunrise, to taste what strawberries taste like. It's incredible. And that is a gift. And that is already winning the effing lottery to me. In that short span that we're given to be on this incredible blue planet that is so beautiful, we should enjoy it. Whether it be talking about fun, futile things like bags, whether it be saving lives, being in the, the best world's best renowned surgeon, heart surgeon or something, being the person finding the cure for cancer, or just enjoying the sunsets. We tend to forget how lucky we are to be on this planet. And we tend to forget what a gift that already is. No matter if you believe or not in gods or God or whatever you want to believe in or not believe in. Fact is, you're here now. And the now is magic. And it's as magical as you want to make it magical. So don't waste your time being negative. Don't waste your time telling other people how shitty they are because you're just gonna end up being shittier than they are by doing so. Enjoy in every moment, see the positive, see the glass half full, not half empty. I'm telling this not just to you guys, as I'm saying it, I'm telling it to myself as well because I'm the type of person who always tends to, you know, wake up in the morning thinking, oh God, no, I feel so bad. And I have to like, bam, smack myself, say, Jacob, no, wake up, do not let yourself be negative. Think positive thoughts. Have fun, enjoy life, because when you, ha when you send out those positive vibes, they come back to you. Because the universe is one huge, ginormous mass of everything mixing and colliding, and sending out negative just poisons everything, and then you get it back. Send the positive. And I know there are people suffering and struggling so much, and it's so hard to, you know, for some people, there's so much injustice on this planet. I get it. But we have to think positive. Help people when, as, as much as we can. Nobody's expecting you to give everything you own, everything you have to somebody else. But just ra rationalize and, and give as much as you can and help as much as you can. And see the beauty in things. Uh, a couple of years ago uh, with, with a bunch of friends, it was so amazing. We were, we were on... Uh, on um, a meadow it was it was like a foresty place and we were, it was summer and we were watching the sunset and we were talking talking at a certain point and when the sun when the sun started setting we just we didn't notice it until it was almost setting we were completely silent we stopped talking and and that last ray of light when the sun is like you know when it just like disappears on the horizon boom, and it, it sends that last like red ray and then, then the sky just turns like that beautiful orangey and shades of pink and rosy and peachy red tones and hues. We all started, we just, we applauded. It was a, it was a fucking applause. It was applause worthy. That's a miracle right there. That's the beauty of it. And applauding to that, that's the best theater piece there is. And you get to live it every day. Now the door is ringing. Gotta go get the door. Okay, okay, guys. I'm back, I'm back. So this all this emotional roller coaster now. Just to let you guys know, uh, I'm gonna stop here because I'm like bothering you with all this nonsense. Well, it's not nonsense. It's serious. But at the same time, I want you just to be as happy as you can be, and as long as time permits us to be happy. So. I know this is crazy, like to make this like axe or parable or whatever you want from like discussing the difference between these two bags, like what is better, what is the ultimate bag to discovering that to me, the ultimate is a beautiful sunset. But it is. If I could turn the sunset into a bag, I would wear it every day. There you go, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Love you all. And thank you so much for everything you've done for me till now because the comments, the positive energy, the vibes, 
subscribing, letting me know how much you care and that you understand what I'm telling you and that, that you're, you kind of get it, what, what, what I'm all about, is, it, means, it means like the world to me. Because um, most of my life, especially when I was a kid, you know, most people would just not get you. They would make fun of me. They would just bully me. And, you know, you, you get a tough skin at a certain point. You just, you take it and then you decide whatever goes in here goes out there and it's gone bye bye <laughs> so love y'all see you soon stay tuned for more and subscribe to my channel bye love y'all